Well, I can't say it brings back memories of my old Volkswagen Beetle. And you know, it's true, every year uh, they add new gadgets and toys to automobiles, but still the basics of driving remain the same. And I suppose most of us take driving for granted. But that's not the case for everyone. Here's Sandra Neal with that story. Chances are you don't think a lot about the interior of vehicles when you're driving, but the next time you're at a stoplight, the driver beside you just may be using different devices to operate his vehicle than you are. To the best of my knowledge, there's been quadriplegic driving for about 25 years, but I don't think uh, it's really been available to most of them until the last uh, seven or eight years, maybe even, maybe even a little bit less than that. They get their driver's license basically in the same manner that you or I would. Uh, they have uh, special classes and, uh, and training, but uh, they get their license the same as you and I. What conversion would you do in a car, say for someone that has had polio and has weak uh, leg strength? Uh, just somebody like that. That would be just a, a regular set of hand controls. I mean, I call them regular because we see them every day. It's just a simple mechanical mechanism that uh, operates the gas and the brake by usually the left hand, and they steer with the right. I've been working here for about four years now, and I found it really interesting. I'm, you know, I, I'm just overjoyed. I'm, I'm overjoyed with, you know, just seeing them able to drive. It's just the point is I like to see things like that. It's like you've done something after you finished your job, and they're out and they're waving to you, see you later, you know? You know, it's just, it's, it's amazing, you know, just the equipment out there for them to drive. This is uh, Bruce Winslow's van. He's a uh, quadriplegic and we do it for his independency to be independent he can do what he wants when he wants whenever he wants when he comes up on the lift straight even with the thing he just rolls up and he, he positions himself on the power pen now the switch here brings down the power pen which i just show you a bit here brings it up and down okay um once he's down to the just eye level um he'd bring his steering down which would which go like this the main three controls are on the top that Bruce works with. There's ignition, start, and the shifter that shift these three lights. You got park, reverse, and drive. This is how the, he uses the foot controls, vacuum braking gas called the VBG. So those are his pedals? Yeah, yeah, it's upper pedals. It's all, all controlled by vacuum. And it's very, very light to the touch, very light to the touch. Bruce Winslow has been driving around town for the past four years. He became a quadriplegic from a diving accident nine years ago. It took about five years before he acquired the strength and the courage to drive, and now he spends most of his time behind the wheel in his customized van. When I first started driving, uh, I thought I'd be, you know, pick it up just like I did uh, a regular vehicle. But when I drove, I couldn't drive faster than about 60, 60 kilometers an hour. Uh, just uh, the wind would catch the van, or the steering is very sensitive. And it took me uh, about a, a year before I could drive at speeds uh, for the highway. Looking for thunder shower activity in the afternoon tomorrow, a high of 33. So it appears will be cloudy tonight and warm, and thunder showers tomorrow. David Onnelly is an environment specialist on City TV in Toronto. Because of his limited disability when walking, David uses portable hand controls to drive. It's very easy. I really don't think twice about it any more than anyone who is uh, not using hand controls would, uh, would think twice about it. I mean, I just activate the handbrake when it's uh, necessary to slow the car down. And uh, when I want to accelerate, I just simply pull back on the hand throttle and, of course, away we go. The hand controls that I've got here um, are, are very easily installed. They're very easily uh, um, implemented into the automobile. And fortunately, my disability is such that it's, it did not require a, a tremendously costly conversion of the car uh, to enable me to drive. Not everyone can afford to get a van like this converted. It costs about $30,000. So some travelers opt for a special kind of public transportation. Wheel trans service is predominantly used by the disabled community for anybody who cannot board normal services such as the subway or the trolley buses or streetcars. 
Why would they opt for your service then? Is it more cost efficient? Cost efficient, the same as yourself. You use uh, public transportation to go downtown, the downtown core, and to avoid the driving. Now, if I would see this van beside me, would I know that, that I would be beside a physically challenged driver? No, I don't, I don't think you would. I, 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 I don't even know. <laughs> Put it that way. There's so many out there that I don't even know. Like, you know, it just the only way I can tell is by the license plate. Now, it must be a great feeling to be able to drive side by side with, with other drivers, and they can't even tell that you're using different devices, can they? No, and that's why I think I like driving the most. Uh, that uh, I think this is the only time people don't know that I use a wheelchair. So here's the question. Where were you 32 years ago? I know some of you weren't even a glint in your father's eye. As for me, well, I was in diapers, but found time to get motoring TV off the ground. And today, I like to think we've got one of the best automotive video libraries in the world. If you agree, please give us the thumbs up and also subscribe. We really appreciate it.